There's a warning this morning that more people are likely to lose their jobs in the next three months. The Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development says a growing number... Hmm. Well, or is it to justify, of course, the easy reaping of um, uh, fines well, against I'm sure the middle classes? People will let us know their thoughts on they that will. one. Interestingly, recently in Swindon, they scrapped all their cameras and it's shown that the incidences of accidents went down slightly. Mm, okay, well, let us know your views against the, uh, the, for or against the Chief Constable. Go to the, the newspapers, as you can see with the Daily Telegraph. Very nice to see you in this Monday morning. Very nice to see Mr. John Nicholl. Uh, he's got your newspapers very shortly. Leading the news, Naomi Campbell. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, middle class uh, motorists who speed. Uh, we're going to be talking about bin collections and we're going to be talking about GCSEs in parenting with Mr. John Nicholl in the papers after this from Charlotte. Thanks, Eamon. Police have begun an investigation into the murder of a British couple in Pakistan in a suspected honour killing. Gul Wazir and his wife Begum were shot in. John Nicholl with the, the newspapers. Good to see you, John. Hi. And it's a, it's a story in, in the mirror, um, uh, and it's a soldier and a tragic death here. This is a horrific story, Eamon. Um, Staff Sergeant uh, in the Army, Chris Chaxfield, was out with his wife. He'd just got back from Afghanistan. His wife was in the Army as well. Um, his wife had lived in fear, as many of them do, for six months, that she'd have that knock on the door in the middle of the night. They were out celebrating, having a drink in Newcastle, my hometown, uh, on the way back to get a taxi in the morning, uh, and uh, a drunken, steroid fueled uh, boxer, Michael Ridley, attacked them. It's not clear why he attacked them, but it's, it seems to be totally unprovoked. But he punched Chris in the back of the head, his brain bounced off his skull, and he died. Chris is a big man. I mean, he's, he's a big, big 31 big years of age. Staff this sergeant Ridley in the army. He's yeah. 22. And he was punched in the back of the head, so it attacked from behind. Uh, and, the guy, and he died. Uh, and so now uh, his wife's got to tell his daughter that her father's dead. He didn't die in Afghanistan. And what they're talking about here is that this young man, uh, Ridley, um, got five years for manslaughter. He actually said, oh, he, he, he pleaded not guilty to murder. Or he said, I didn't murder him. I plead guilty to manslaughter because I didn't mean to kill him. Five years. So that means he'll be out in two, two and a half years for killing a man? OK. Uh, now, we move on to the uh, police, the chief constable of Cambridgeshire. Yeah. Um, who seems to be targeting... <laughs> uh, Middle class. Well, we, we we of the middle classes, if that's what we are, are an easy target, of course, because we don't fight back, whereas the uh, the underclasses do fight back. But what she's seeing is middle class uh, people who speed or who park outside a school are a menace and are as guilty as anybody who has an asbo for un, for unruly behaviour. And she's missing two points, I think. The first one is that speeding. It, nobody can condone doing 90 mile an hour in a 50 mile an hour speed limit. But I live near a school where the speed limit's 30 mile an hour. It is not safe to do 30 mile an hour yeah. when there's kids coming yeah, to and from Yeah, but I bet you school. there are no speed cameras there's around no, it. No, there's no yeah. speed cameras, it's a single track road. But doing 30 miles an hour is more dangerous down there than doing 20 mile an hour, but they're not break, breaking the law. Well, and the other point she's missing, sorry, is that she's not talking about the drunken thuggery, like this young, this guy who was killed in Newcastle on a night out. She's not talking about the drunken thuggery that most of us have to contend so with. So do you think she's shifting the blame, shifting the focus here? Well, to be fair to her, she's talking about cuts and everything else, and it is this headline about speeding that gets it. But it, it's, it's missing the point that most of us are try to be as law-abiding as we can and doing 35 as I was doing and got done for speeding in a 30 at 6 o'clock in the morning makes me feel kind of quite put out, to be perfectly honest. Maybe we just need more exams to teach us how to be better um, drivers. Um, well, and on the subject of exams, we go to the Daily Mail, a column by Janet Street Porter. Well, this is uh, uh, Labour MP Frank Field, who David Cameron of the coalition government has asked again to look at, uh, look at the, the way that we're bringing up our kids' uh, benefits and all of the other ancillary items. And what he's saying, what Frank Field is saying, is that they should, in actual fact, instead of teaching kids about personal, you know, the, the, the personal lessons that they get, we should teach them about parenting. And that's got to be a good idea, hasn't it?
because mm -hmm. in yeah. actual fact you see these people out on the streets all the time who have got no idea how to bring their kids up, don't know how to feed them, don't know how to clothe them, don't know how to look after them. And it sounds very much like the nanny state, and I guess it is the nanny state. But we have to include you and me in that as well. Well, <laughs> the, of course, but I think probably, I mean, our parents were an example to us uh -huh. about how to bring kids up, but there are so many people now who are no example to their children. You see it all of the time, generation after generation, who are constantly having children who don't know how to bring them up. We see them and it varies from poor feeding, poor hygiene, to, to abuse of their kids. And perhaps just telling kids how to bring up children might not be such a bad idea. Yeah, learn to bring yourself up and then, then it will be okay. Now, um, the bins. Uh, police mount wheelie patrols to avert dust-ups after row over uncollected household rubbish. Where is this? Well, this is, uh, this is in Gloucestershire. Uh, tre tre Treadworth in Gloucestershire. Um, this is an ongoing problem. Only the other day I opened my bin to find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of maggots streaming out of... Oh, it was like a horror movie. You know you see in a horror movie and you see maggots pouring out? That's what happened because our bins only get collected every two weeks. Flies get into them even though you bleach them and seal them up and everything else. And what's happening here is in, uh, if your bins are open, so if they're an inch over the top, yes. then the council won't collect them. And that's yeah. what's happened here. And because there's been a few dust-ups between the householders and the bin men, police are now mounting patrols to stop bin rage, mm -hmm. as opposed to but patrols to the, stop I thought the new rage. government was supposed to sort all this out. The Conservatives were anyway. Eric Pickles and, and his lot were supposed to say they, they're going to ah, well, get weekly there's, there's, collections but back. But, Eamon, there is no Conservative government, is there? There's a coalition ah, government now. Ah, ah. Now, uh, no frills hotels arrive in the UK. I thought they were here already, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the trouble is they'll, they'll pass off no frills as being frills nowadays. So, so what do you get charged for? Well, I've certainly been in, a ho in hotels where there are no frills yes. at all, but these are uh, a, 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 a chain from Malaysia's coming over to London. Uh, and you know how you can go on a, a, a flight now and you have to pay for your luggage yes. and pay for your... F well, this is what's going to happen now. You check into a hotel in London and it might cost you £25, £30 a night, which is very cheap, as you know, for London. But you have to pay to use the hairdryer. To have a TV, to have a loo. Oh, you, ha you absolutely <laughs> have to pay to watch your TV. Yes. You have to pay £2 to use a hairdryer, £2 to use a towel. That's, that's not bad, is it? £7.50 to have your room cleaned. If you're only staying for a day... Uh -huh. Do you think that you'd choose the £7.50 option to have your room cleaned or would you leave it for somebody else? I could see it being very appealing uh, to a lot of people to, to live in their own filth for a week <laughs> without <laughs> paying well, for it. Well, there's an, <laughs> they've, they've got an idea about no-frills trains where you actually take all of the seating out so that you're standing oh, rather like cattle. You pay the trouble about no frills is no frills then becomes standard. Indeed. That's what happens. That's, and that's, and that's what many of the airlines are now mm. dumbing down, aren't they? Do you and like your frills, Charlotte? I do, I do indeed, yeah. And I find this incredible that you have to pay extra to, mm. to get a clean room. Well, mm. in the, in, what you used to pay for a decent service, but as Eamon says, if you bring the level down, then everybody goes down to that level yeah. instead of moving up to the high level, and that's what they're doing. Do you know what I love? There's a programme on, is at Channel 5, The Hotel Inspector. Yes. I, love, I watch that every <laughs> Who week. Would stay, but what is, their, what is their idea about well, dirty rooms I was once and foul told, food? I was once told, if you locked off a video camera in a hotel room for one week yeah. and, played the, and showed you, any of us, the tape back again, no one would ever stay, stay in, a in a hotel bed or sleep in a hotel bed ever again. Uh, Mr John <laughs> Nicholl is back in one hour's time. Your views, your comments, newsandsky.com, at Sky Charlotte, at Eamon Holmes, and uh, we'll be doing that uh, again at, a, at 20 to 8 this morning. To America now, concerns at the clean-up yeah. efforts. One of the UK's top police chiefs has criticised middle-class motorists who complain about criminal behaviour but think nothing of speeding. Sky News Sunrise, we've got uh, John Nicholl very shortly with what's in the newspapers. Looking forward to that. Good to see you, John. Uh, Naomi Campbell leading the news. Let's get a roundup of what else is happening in Charlotte with those details. Thanks, Eamon. And police have begun an investigation into the murder of a British couple in Pakistan in a suspected honour killing. Ghul Wazir and his wife Begum were shot in the now... Uh, John Nicholl with the newspapers and we begin with the, the murder of the <coughs> aid worker Karen Wu in Afghanistan. Uh, Eamon, we, I regularly highlight the sacrifice of the military men and women uh, who are out there sacrificing their lives, and here we have a civilian. Uh, and there are increasing numbers of these stories. <clears throat> this one has made the headlines, uh, Karen Wu. Uh, she, she seems like, you know, the archetypal good person, Eamon, mm -hmm. uh, gave up her highly paid job yeah. with a private medical company to set up a charity helping ordinary Afghan people. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a tragedy. 
uh, for obviously for her family, for her fiance, Paddy uh, Smith, who's an ex soldier himself. But I think probably for the people of Afghanistan as well, because all the aid agencies will again now be thinking, how are we going to get aid to the, uh, the outlying districts in Afghanistan, where despite government propaganda, there is little law at all, little law or order. And these civilians are taking their lives in their hands when they go out to these places.